Put God first. Put God first in everything you do. Everything that you think you see in me, everything that I've accomplished, everything that you think I have, and I have a few things. Everything that I have is by the grace of God. Understand that. It's a gift. I was sitting in my mother's beauty parlor and I'm looking in the mirror and I see behind me this woman under the dryer and every time she looked up she every time I looked up she was looking at me just looking me in the eye and I didn't know who she was and I said you know she said somebody give me a pen give me a pencil I have a prophecy March 27 1975 she said boy you are gonna travel the world and speak to millions of people now mind you I was flunked out of college I'm thinking about joining the army. I didn't know what I was going to do. And she's telling me I'm going to travel the world and speak to millions of people. Well, I have traveled the world. And I have spoke to millions of people. But that's not the most important thing, the success that I had. The most important thing is that what she taught me and what she told me that day has stayed with me since. I've been protected. I've been directed. I've been corrected. I've kept God in my life and has kept me humble. I didn't always stick with him, but he always stuck with me. So stick with him in everything you do. If you think you want to do what you think I've done, then do what I've done and stick with God. Number two, fail big. That's right. Fail big. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life, and it can, be, it can be very frightening. It's a new world out there. It's a mean world out there, and you only live once. So do what you feel passionate about, passionate about. Take chances, but don't be afraid to go outside the box. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail big, to dream big, but remember, Dreams without goals are just dreams and they ultimately fuel disappointment. So have dreams, but have goals. And understand that to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. In order to achieve your goals, you must apply discipline, which you have already done, and consistency every day, not just on Tuesday and miss a few days. You have to work at it every day. You have to plan every day. You've heard the saying, we don't plan to fail, we fail to plan. Hard work works. Working really hard is what successful people do. Remember that just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Don't confuse movement with progress. My mother told me, she said, yeah, because you can run in place all the time and never get anywhere. So continue to strive, continue to have goals, continue to progress. You'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. <laughs> I'll say it again. You'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. I don't care how much money you make, you can't take it with you. And it's not how much you have. It's what you do with what you have. We all have different talents. Some of you will be doctors, some lawyers, some scientists, some educators, some nurses. The most selfish thing you can do in this world is help someone else. Why is it selfish? Because the gratification, the goodness that comes to you, the good feeling, the good feeling that I get from helping others, nothing's better than that. Nothing's better than that. Not, not jewelry, not big house I have, not the cars, but the, the, it's the joy. That's where the joy is in helping others. That's where the success is in helping others. Finally, I pray that you put your slippers way under the bed tonight so that when you wake up in the morning, 
You have to get on your knees to reach them. And while, you, when, while you're down there, say thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for parents. Thank you for love. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for humility. Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. That's how I live my life. That's where I, why I am, one of the reasons why I am today. Say thank you in advance for what is already yours. True desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already. I'll say it again. True desire in the heart, that itch that you have, whatever it is you want to do, that thing that you want to do to help others and to, to grow and to make money, that desire, that itch, that's God's proof to you, sent beforehand already to indicate that it's yours. And anything you want good, you can have. So claim it. Work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back. Pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Now I'm sure in your experiences in school and applying to college and picking your major and deciding what you want to do with life, I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Without consistency, you'll never finish. So do what you feel passionate about, passionate about. Take chances. Don't be afraid to fail. There's an old IQ test was nine dots and you had to draw five lines with a pencil within these nine dots without lifting the pencil. The only way to do it was to go outside the box. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail big, to dream big. But remember, dreams without goals are just dreams. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs. Fall forward. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Because the 1,001st was the light bulb. Fall forward. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. You've got to take risks, and I'm sure you've probably heard that before, but I want to talk to you about why that's so important. You will fail at some point in your life, accept it. You will lose. You will embarrass yourself. You will suck at something. There's no doubt about it. And I know that's probably not a traditional message for a graduation ceremony, but hey, I'm telling you, embrace it, because it's inevitable. In the acting business, you fail all the time. Early on in my career, I auditioned for a part in a Broadway musical. Perfect role for me, I thought, except for the fact that I can't sing. I didn't get the job. But here's the thing, 
I didn't quit. I didn't fall back. I walked out of there to prepare for the next audition and the next audition and the next audition. I prayed. I prayed and I prayed. But I continued to fail and fail and fail. But it didn't matter because you know what? There's an old saying, you hang around the barbershop long enough, sooner or later you're going to get a haircut. So you will catch a break, and I did catch a break. Last year, I did a play called Fences on Broadway. But here's the kicker. It was at the court theater. It was at the same theater that I failed that first audition 30 years prior. The point is, every graduate here today has the training and the talent to succeed. But do you have the guts to fail? If you don't fail, you're not even trying. I'll say it again. If you don't fail, you're not even trying. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. Just imagine you're on your deathbed and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use. And they're standing around your bed, angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, how many ghosts are going to be around your bed when your time comes? I just got back from South Africa. It's a beautiful country. But there are places there with terrible poverty that need help. And Africa is just the, the, the tip of the iceberg. The Middle East needs your help. Japan needs your help. Alabama needs your help. Tennessee needs your help. Louisiana needs your help. Philadelphia needs your help. The world needs a lot and we need it from you. We really do. We need it from you young people. I mean, I'm not speaking for the rest of us up here, but I know I'm getting a little grayer. We need it from you, the young people, because remember this. You got to get out there. You got to give it everything you got, whether it's your time, your, your, your talent, your prayers, or your treasures. What are you going to do with what you have? I'm not talking about how much you have. Some of you are business majors, some of you are theologians, nurses, sociologists. Some of you have money, some of you have patience, some of you have kindness, some of you have love. Some of you have the gift of long suffering, whatever it is, whatever your gift is. What are you going to do with what you have? All right, now here's my last point about failure. Sometimes it's the best way to figure out where you're going. Your life will never be a straight path. I began at Fordham University as a pre-med student. I, I took a course called the Cardiac Morphogenesis. I couldn't read it, I couldn't say it, I sure couldn't pass it. So then I decided to go into pre-law, then journalism. And with no academic focus, my grades took off in their own direction. I was a 1.8 GPA. And the university very politely suggested that it might be better to take some time off. I was 20 years old, I was at my lowest point. And then one day, and I remember the exact day, March 27, 1975, I was helping my mother in her beauty shop. My mother owned a beauty shop up in Mount Vernon. And there's, there was this older woman who was uh, considered one of the elders in the town. And, I didn't know her personally, but I, I was looking in the mirror, and every time I looked at the mirror, I could see her behind me, and she was staring at me. She just kept looking at me. Every time I looked at her, she kept giving me these strange looks. 
So she finally took the dryer off her head and said to some, she said something I'll never forget. She said, young boy, I have a prophecy, a spiritual prophecy. She said, you are going to travel the world and speak to millions of people. And in the years that followed, just as that woman prophesied, I have traveled the world and I have spoken to millions of people through my movies. Millions who up till this day couldn't see me, I, who, who up till this day I couldn't see while I was talking to them and they couldn't see me, they could only see the movie. They couldn't see the real me. But I see you today and I'm encouraged by what I see. And I'm strengthened by what I see. Because taking risk is not just about going for a job. It's also about knowing what you know and what you don't know. It's about being open to people and to ideas. The chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. Never be discouraged, never hold back, give everything you got. And when you fall throughout life, remember this, fall forward. Number one, put God first. Put God first in everything you do. Everything that you think you see in me, everything that I've accomplished, everything that you think I have, and I have a few things. Everything that I have is by the grace of God. Understand that. It's a gift. 40 years ago, March 27th, 1975, it was 40 years ago, uh, just this past March, I was flunking out of college. I had a 1.7 grade point average. I hope none of you can relate. <laughs> I had a 1.7 grade point average. I was sitting in my mother's beauty shop. They still call it beauty shop now, but they call it, yeah, I was sitting in the beauty parlor. I was sitting in my mother's beauty parlor and I'm looking in the mirror and I see behind me this woman under the dryer. And every time she looked up, she, every time I looked up, she was looking at me, just looking me in the eye. I didn't know who she was, and I said, you know, she said, somebody give me a pen, give me a pencil, I have a prophecy. March 27, 1975, she said, boy, you are going to travel the world and speak to millions of people. Now, mind you, I was flunked out of college. I'm thinking about joining the army. I didn't know what I was going to do, and she's telling me I'm going to travel the world and speak to millions of people. Well, I have traveled the world, and I have spoke to millions of people. But that's not the most important thing, the success that I had. The most important thing is that what she taught me and what she told me that day has stayed with me since. I've been protected. I've been directed. I've been corrected. I've kept God in my life and has kept me humble. I didn't always stick with him, but he always stuck with me. So stick with him in everything you do. If you think you want to do what you think I've done, then do what I've done and stick with God. Number two, fail big. That's right, fail big. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life and it can, be, it can be very frightening. It's a new world out there, it's a mean world out there and you only live once. So do what you feel passionate about, passionate about. Take chances professionally. Don't be afraid to fail. There's an old IQ test was nine dots and you had to draw five lines with a pencil within these nine dots without lifting the pencil. The only way to do it was to go outside the box. So don't be afraid to go outside the box. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail big, to dream big, but remember, Dreams without goals are just dreams and they ultimately fuel disappointment. 
So have dreams, but have goals. Life goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, daily goals. I try to give myself a goal every day. Sometimes it's just to not curse somebody out. <laughs> Simple goals, but have goals. And understand that to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. In order to achieve your goals, you must apply discipline, which you've already done, and consistency every day, not just on Tuesday and miss a few days. You have to work at it every day. You have to plan every day. You've heard the saying, we don't plan to fail, we fail to plan. Hard work works. Working really hard is what successful people do. And in this text, tweet, twerk world that you've grown up in, <laughs> remember, just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Remember that. Just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Don't confuse movement with progress. My mother told me, she said, yeah, because you can run in place all the time and never get anywhere. So continue to strive, continue to have goals, continue to progress. Number three, you'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. I'll say it again. You'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. I don't care how much money you make, you can't take it with you. And it's not how much you have. It's what you do with what you have. We all have different talents. Some of you will be doctors, some lawyers, some scientists, some educators, some nurses, some teachers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> some preachers. The most selfish thing you can do in this world is help someone else. Why is it selfish? Because the gratification, the goodness that comes to you, the good feeling, the good feeling that I get from helping others, nothing's better than that. Not jewelry, not big house I have, not the cars, but the, the, it's the joy. That's where the joy is in helping others. That's where the success is. Finally, I pray that you put your slippers way under the bed tonight so that when you wake up in the morning you have to get on your knees to reach them and while, you, when, while you're down there say thank you for grace thank you for mercy thank you for understanding thank you for wisdom thank you for parents Thank you for love. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for humility. Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. That's how I live my life. That's where I, why I am, one of the reasons why I am today. Say thank you in advance for what is already yours. True desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already. I'll say it again. True desire in the heart, that itch that you have, whatever it is you want to do, that thing that you want to do to help others and to, to grow and to make money, that desire, that itch, that's God's proof to you sent beforehand already to indicate that it's yours. And anything you want good you can have so claim it work hard to get it when you get it reach back pull someone else up each one teach one don't just aspire to make a living aspire to make a difference I can t I, the universal stems from the specifics, so I'll talk about my family. 
You know, I have a God-fearing, loving, faithful wife who has taught me so much about family. I'm from a broken home. Seeing her consistency in, 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 in really running the household while I'm out hunting, <laughs> you know, and, and, and understanding the importance of family and, you know, I protect her, I love her, and I provide for her and, and about 800 other ones, I don't know all the rest <laughs> of them, but, but that's my job. But I, you know, the, the, you, they talk about the roles we have, no, but that doesn't mean one role is more important. Yes, I'm the breadwinner, but my children are winners because of my wife. March 27, 1975, a prophet named Ruth Green prophesied that I would travel the world and preach to millions of people. I was flunking out, of, I had flunked out of college. I was in my mother's beauty shop and she kept looking at me in the mirror. And every time I looked up, she was looking at me. So she wrote it down, I still have a piece of paper. I've told this story before. She didn't say you're gonna be an actor. She didn't say you're gonna make you know, movies, you're gonna make millions of dollars and all that. Make a long story long, 1982, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. It just wasn't ready. Going back to your question. Rationalize, justify it, if you will, what I was doing by speaking through my work. I asked the pastor, uh, 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 Bishop Blake, I said, well, do you think, you know, I told him that story, I don't know how many years ago, you think I should be a pastor? With what she told me. She said, no. He said, no, you have your pulpit. Mm -hmm. So I always looked for that, for lack of a better word, angle. What's the story? That the only thing I wrote on the cover of Training Day was the wages of sin is death. I had the end of that film changed. For in order for me to justify living in the worst way, I had to die in the worst way. He died in a very small way in the, in the script but I purposely wanted him to be knocked down on the ground and crawl like a snake. I purposely wanted everyone in the community to turn on him and I wanted him to die in the most violent way. So for many, many years and decades, I did that through my work and through my philanthropy and through being a good guy and all of those things. That's not the case anymore. What my mother said to me was, Denzel, you do a lot of good, but you must do good the right way. She said, and you know what I'm talking about. Can't buy your way in. Can't love your way in. You gotta serve. You gotta do good the right way. So at 66, getting ready to be 67, having just buried my mother, I made a promise to her and to God to do, not just to do good the right way, but to honor my mother and my father by the way I live my life the rest of my days on this earth. I'm here to serve, to help, to provide. In every prayer, you know, the ego's interesting. You just don't know. But in every prayer, all I hear is feed my sheep. That's what God wants me to do. I'm like, well, wait a minute, <laughs> what's that mean? Well, what I found out in the last couple of years of hearing it, that there's all kinds of sheep. Not everybody wants to go right to the... So that's why I talk to experienced shepherds <laughs> like yourself to, 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 to help guide me. So to make a long story longer, going back to your question, it can be wobbly. The world has changed. What is our role as a man? You know, the, 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 the John Wayne formulas is not quite <laughs> doesn't fit right right now, but uh, strength. Yes, I've been high up on the mountain. I've been blessed, but that's a slippery slope. Yeah, and it's lonely up there. Well, I'm here to say, <laughs> men, what I played in the movies is not who I am. It's what I played. The essence of it, which what you're talking about, is what I wanted to come through. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to sit or stand on any pedestal and tell you about what I had in mind for you or your soul. Because the fact of the matter is in the whole 40 year process, I was struggling for my own. So I put it this way, training day is the easiest part I play. There's more of that in me than cry freedom or 
even Malcolm X. Life has humbled me. I used to say I wanted to be the best actor in the world. When I won the second Oscar, I said I wanted to be the best actor I could be. Now I don't even necessarily want to be an actor. It's not my goal anymore. It's not a burning desire for me. I may segue out of it in the next few years, if not sooner. But to go all the way back to your question, none of that would have happened without the family. None of that would have happened, and not just my wife, but the love I give to my children and the love I give back. Coaching, and, oh, I, I was one of the worst coaches, I, you know, <laughs> I getting in fights with other dads and all that, you know, but I love to inspire, I like that. I like seeing people do well. It was so interesting, I ended up becoming an actor because I've never been the out front guy. I just like, I like seeing people do good. You know, society is forcing success down our throat, comparative success down our throat. You know, I don't know if the Bible says it, but it's, it's, it's somewhere it says, in the last days we'll become lovers of ourselves. It's in the Bible. The number one photograph now is a self. Selfie. E. Yeah. So all, we all want to be followed. No, you know, we all want to lead, I should say. We want, we want, we're willing to do anything young ladies and young men, anything to be influential. Yeah, yeah. You know, the universal stems from the specific. Where's your soul? Where's your heart? Where does it start? Do you want credit for it? Or do you want to see the other person do well? It's the most selfish thing I've done in my life is give because of the joy that I get from it. I love it. I don't like it. I love it. I don't know if that was my nature or my mother taught me. I remember I was starting to be a little successful. My mom said, I came in, I said, Ma, did you think I, she said, you shut up right where you are. All the people been praying for you. <laughs> Grandfathers, great grandfathers. Then she started calling me superstar for about a month. Hey, superstar, go get that squeegee in that bucket, superstar. Hit them windows, superstar. Hey, superstar, come here, hit the back. You know, she had me cleaning Feet it. on the ground. Feet on the ground. So we, that, that, that unit, that family, I didn't do it by myself. I couldn't have done it, obviously, without my mother. I couldn't have done it without my wife. I couldn't have done it without my children. Who teaches you to be a man? You know, but uh, fame is a, tr is a monster, you know, and we all have these ladders of battles, roads we have to walk in our given lives. Be you famous or, 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 or whoever's out there listening, we all have our individual challenges.